Hello, uh, this is 22CSO Justin. I'm the creator of the Foxhole Artillery Overlay. So I'm just going to walk, this is going to be a short video just walking you through kind of how to use the tool a little bit. Um, and this will pair with the information on the GitHub Wiki. So once you go, once you launch the app, uh, you'll go through the Unity splash screen and you'll be presented with uh, these icons up here at the top. Uh, you click the gun icon, this will expand the um, toolbar is available to you for the overlay. It's called an overlay because as you can see it overlays on top of the foxhole game window. If you imagine two tiers like a cake, this is the top layer of the cake. It basically allows you to interact with um, the icons and things, um, but then also being able to interact with the game underneath via some really fancy Windows transparency stuff. So anyways, um, basically how do you use this thing? Take this. What does the app do? So the app basically allows you to calculate azimuth and distances between two marker points, um, basically taking taking advantage of the wonderful map the Foxhole devs have given us here. Um, there is no, uh, this does not interact with the Foxhole ape, with the Foxhole client at all. There is no hacks, no backdoors, nothing. This is just one layer sitting on top of another layer, and you are manipulating it with the mouse. So I'm going to get that out of the way so before people think this is something, you know, against the terms of service or anything like that, this is not that. So basically, what you have to do is, well, the way this works is it basically calculates the distance and azimuth in pixels between the two markers, the green gun marker and the red target marker. Um, but how do you convert that from pixels into meters, right? Because that's what we're shooting in the game is meters. So where you basically have to come up with a scale. In this case, um, I just click the little scale icon here and it brings up this little icon. Um, if you increase the slider bar, it, well, if you change the size of it, if you by drag, click and dragging, um, it will make this bigger, smaller. Um, basically what you want to do is this is basically how we convert uh, pixels into meters. So in this case, we know each one of these three by three subgrids according to the Foxel Wiki is 125 by 125 meters. Um, by basically sizing this this uh, grid here on the left, that converts our pixels into meters. So let's we'll get this kind of lined up here um, just for testing purposes. But basically, the closer you get this to match the grid um, in in the map, the much more the more accurate your solution will be. Um, I've gotten this to be very accurate. So basically, at this approximate scale. Um, if I put, uh, if we click target marker, or excuse me, gun marker, and the target marker here, at these ranges, and with this setup, you can get one-to-one -one accuracy with binoculars. And even at artillery-like distances, um, you can get within a few meters of the actual, you know, if you were to do this with binoculars and the relative uh, azimuth distance calculations that we've been doing for years. So I guess basically all in all, you know, take your time, get this grid set up basically properly like you'd like to. Um, so um, as you already saw, um, how to activate the markers are basically clicking um, and then drag, click and holding and dragging with your mouse, just like, you know, you're dropping a pin in Google Earth, right? Or Google Maps, this basically works the same way. So you basically drop the marker where you want the gun to be, drop the marker where you want the target to be, and it basically calculates that solution. Uh, the black line obviously connects the two points and it gives you an azimuth the distance to shoot here in the top, uh, this top bar. Once this grid is set, um, as long as you don't adjust, as long as you don't scale your map in and out, you can basically keep moving these things around to your heart's desire. You can move them across the map, you can move them, you know, you can scroll with the map, but you cannot um, zoom in and out. Otherwise you have to reset the scale. So when you're done with this, you can just move it off to the side if you don't want it cluttering your main game window. Because um, important note, this will sit here, you know, if I exit out of the map view, I go back and you can see these things still sit up here. That's why it's an overlay, right? As we already talked about. So basically this gives you, this is, in, in this mode, the tool is just a azimuth distance, you know, straight line between two points. Um, has another little trick up its sleeve. So if you click here in the gear icon, you can basically select what type of platform are you using. So for example, we're going to use a 120 millimeter colonial field artillery. Um, and then now if you click on the markers, so if you just, um, as an aside, if you just click on the marker, if you don't click and drag, if you just click, 
and release. It basically forces a manual recompute. Um, and there'll be information of this on the wiki as well here, but basically just forces the, um, the calculations to run again. So if you were to change, let's say from a warden or from a colonial gun to a warden gun, click update, boom, changes. So and actually you can see right there from what I just did, this uh, solution box up here is color coded based on min and max ranges, uh, depending what you're shooting on. So let's say you go back to colonial, boom, we are now two meters over distance. Uh, the final trick this thing has up its sleeve as well is it takes the wind offsets into account. So that's what this little compass is over here on the right. If you click and hold and you basically drag around this orange uh, marker and let go, it'll basically update the wind azimuth. And by clicking in the center or anywhere inside here, you can basically increase the wind tier from wind tier 1, which you can't go any lower than 1, to wind tier 5. Now I know there's six wind tiers in the game. Um, I guess wind tier six is not that all, not all that common. You're probably not going to be shooting artillery in there anyways because it's going to be highly variable. And so good luck basically getting a reading, adjusting this, trying to get a firing solution, etc. So um, if you go on the wiki, there are five. There's a GIF with uh, five examples. Excuse me, the Foxhole wiki. There's a GIF with five examples of different wind tiers. Um, that's the other half of being an artillery uh, guy is basically trying to figure out what is the wind tier and where is it aiming at. Uh, so you can get this accurate in here. Basically, it makes your life, uh, it makes this tool a lot more accurate. Um, and so we have done some testing, um, 22 CSO. We've done some testing on our own testing range. And basically, if you can get the wind set up properly uh, and get everything sighted up and get the grid scale correct, you can basically drop arounds in the spotter field of view. So the whole point of this tool is to basically not replace spotters, but to augment spotters, right? We've all done this. We've all done multiple rangings, right, in the past where you're having to do two or three relative rangings from target to landmark, landmark to gun, uh, etc. And this basically, I want to simplify that process, right? I don't want to have to have everybody go into an external artillery calculator or making sure you're copying, you know, azimuth and range correctly. Sometimes you get them flipped up right and you have to go back and recopy them again. It's just kind of cumbersome process. So the goal of this too is to basically somebody say, hey, I want to hit this target right here. Okay. And you've got a spotter, let's say sitting here, you're trying to look at the target. Instead of the spotter trying to do all the work, the gun crew can basically know where they are. The spotter can call it where they want to hit. You drop a marker, boom, it gives you an initial firing solution. So basically it's saying, if you aimed here, and let's say we had a little more range on this, let's say this was green, and you fired here, the spotter, if he's looking at this location through binoculars, he should see the round splash, right? The rounds are not going to go over here, they're not going to go over here, they're going to end up in this general area. And then if you want precision fires, you can then sit there and walk it in, which that's the whole point of this. You're not getting rid of the spotter, you're augmenting the spotter. So if you have the, let's say you have the wind set up correctly and it's blowing just the right way, they're going to land roughly in this neighborhood. That's the whole point of this tool. It's to try to take artillery and artillery calculations and make it available to the mass with more than it already is. There's already, you know, some guessing and checking, you know, firing two, three, four test rounds, right? Trying to get the windage right, etc. You still have to do that, but at least you're not having as many missed shots where somebody says, hey, fire again, I can't see the rounds, you know, shoot again. This, I want to get away from some of that. I want to basically simplify that and make it uh, more straightforward for people to use. So, um, as you can see here, there's different drop downs, mortar, gunboats, um, all the different, you know, pl current platforms are in the game. It's important to note, though, that uh, mortars, gunboats, and rockets do not have, I repeat, do not have wind offsets applied to them yet because I do not have good values for those that I can basically have a concrete source source for that says these are correct. Um, I've gotten rough things for 120s, 150s, and 300s, you know, in, even including storm cannons and the rail cannons, but nothing for the other ones yet. So those will be coming down the line. Um, so in a in a later version. So right now, if you so right now if you choose either of those, there is zero wind offset. Um, basically, this compass over here does nothing. Uh, and a little nice feature I've programmed in as well is if so, let's say let's say you're on a 120, you know, colonial, 
and you want to just go back to wind offsets. You, you, you don't want any wind offsets in. You just want just azimuth distance. All you got to do is go back to artillery type and basically close the gear icon. And basically now there is no wind applied whatsoever. You know, you keep clicking this bar, dragging around. This solution does not change. So if you're using mortars or something, you can still use this tool for right now. It just is not going to have the wind effects in there. Um, like I said, they're coming down the line. I just need to get some better sources of data for that. Um, another thing to keep in mind when you use this tool is, let's say you're done playing with artillery for the day and you're doing you're doing tanks or you're doing something else in Foxhole. Um, or, you know, you, you've lost these markers on one part of the screen and you can't find them or they're, you know, way over here and it's just, it, it's just too much hassle and you just want to, you just want to reset fresh or you want to minimize this bar up here. Just click the gun icon, boom, it all minimizes. And when you click it again, everything has reset again. So yes, you have to go back and reset the scale. Um, I guess actually the scale is kept. Hmm, interesting feature, bug, whatever. Um, but everything else resets. Um, the wind resets, the wind tiers reset, and so it gives you a fresh start, basically. Again, um, as long as you don't move the mouse, and then your grid has to be reset. Um, there is a little help, um, little help icon right here. So it basically gives you a really quick, over, quick and dirty overview of this. Like I said, um, right now I don't have a GitHub repository link because it's still private while I make this video. Um, but there will be a GitHub repository link here, so everybody can look at the source code. This will be completely open sourced. Um, all the you know code and everything will be out there for people to look at, um, and as well as license information. Um, so yeah, I think that's really about it for this. I want to keep it short and sweet here if we can. And then um, when you're done with this, obviously hit the red X. Boom, disappears. If you want to relaunch, you can relaunch it. Uh, the CPU usage is pretty low, so you can just have this running. You know, if you plan on doing anything for artillery, you know, during the course of your Foxhole session, just start it up, have it running in the background, and then when you want to, just pop it open and use it. So, uh, thank you very much, and if there's any questions, feel free to contact me on Discord or YouTube comments, or I, um, I also accept pull requests if you have code changes for the GitHub repository. So, like I said, I want this to be a community uh, project, something is open to everybody from all the factions, and basically have everybody enjoy the fun that is artillery. Thank you.